cakes, cookies. Some weird people say chicks. Uh, that's not how you say it. It's a weird accent in Swedish, and don't trust these people that say that because it's kicks. You can see the K. Hi, I'm Zara Larson, and today I'm gonna be trying out some things, explain to you guys what it is. If you like IKEA, you might recognize some of these things, and IKEA, just like me, is Swedish. So, this is almost like a little tutorial. The cinnamon buns. Very Swedish. We have a cinnamon bun day. Maybe you guys have that in America as well. Let's have a try. Tastes like a good cinnamon bun. Mm, okay, okay. Moving on to um, skumto. I didn't know that these were like a Swedish thing. I thought everybody has these. They look like this inside, like a marshmallow thing. This was like what you had in school when everybody was bringing snacks and you had like a snack day where everybody was baking. This was like what I brought because my mom don't bake and it's like cheap, so. <laughs> the next thing that I didn't know was Swedish that I thought everybody had is dime. No one eats that. That's not a, like a really big thing. What? They deserve to be. This is with an orange flavor, limited edition apparently. I haven't tried these ones myself, so I'm quite excited. It's chocolate covered toffee with a tiny bit of nut in it. I like the orange. That was nice. Yeah. Seal, also from Ikea. It's so Swedish. They have these little pickled herring in whatever sauce. This is a mustard sauce. If you want to eat this the real Swedish way, you should have it with small potato, summer potatoes, spring onion, maybe some dill, and also sour cream is the way to eat it. This is for Easter, this is for midsummer, for everything. And I saw something exciting here too. These ones, knäckebröd. Knäckebröd is like bread, but it's hard. So knäck would be like crack in Swedish. I say, so when something cracks, like, Yeah. It was really nice. It was really nice with this bread. Last night, I had some Italian meatballs. And the big difference is, the Swedish ones are yummier. Sorry, Italians, I'm just being honest. But we can't forget the lingon. Lingon, it's a um, berry, and it lives in the Swedish forest, and probably all around the world and I don't even like this that much. I personally would never buy like a drink, but I do like it a lot on meatballs. And also if you have pickled cucumber with it, it's really nice. And creamy mashed potatoes and brown sauce. That's how you do it if you're a real Swede. Very good. What else do we have? Make room for my pie. Mmm, rhubarb. Rhubarbs, really nice. I used to have rhubarbs on my, um, what is it called, yard? Garden? In my garden. But we have those really big snails that just ate everything. Mm -hmm. I wish it was a tiny bit more sour. Oh my gosh, I'm like a judge on the Great British Bake Off. I wish it was a bit more sour. <laughs> Ooh, cafeteria. Cafeteria, it's almost like fika. And you go to this place, which is like a Starbucks, but preferably more cozy. And then you sit and you talk shit with someone and you drink coffee. That's a special word for it and it's called fika. It's very important in Swedish culture. So kafferiep is almost like that. It might be lunch break, middle of the day, and you want something sweet to it. Gooey chocolate cake, a Swedish classic, thin and gooey to please any chocolate lover. They really sold it to me. Ooh, it's definitely gooey, look at this. Mm, mm. I like that. I think this is like an alphabet thing. Ooh, what should we spell? I see it. Yay. I think it's a great place, but it doesn't really make like everything the way it should be. Like a homemade pie will always be better, for example. But if you just crave something Swedish and you want it now, I would say if you like Swedish meatballs, these are really good. So I would probably pick the meatballs or actually 
the pickled herring. Thank you for watching.